how to clip a horse. Today I'm going to use the Wahl KM10 clippers with the Andes T10 blade and then that's a wide blade and also the standard 10 blade that comes with the clippers. So before I start clipping I like to make sure that the horse is comfortable with the clippers, the sound and the vibration and just gives me an idea how they're going to cope a little bit as well and so I can keep both myself and the horse safe. So start at the shoulder and I like to work up the neck. When you're clipping a horse, you want to make sure that you clip against the lie of the hair. So where the hair grows down, you want to clip up. When you're using your clippers, you want to, to get the best finish, you want to try and keep the face of the blade as smooth and flat against the skin and with an even pressure. So if you lift the, if you dig the back of the clippers in, so therefore you lift the teeth off the skin, then you'll start to get different clip lengths which leaves and you won't have such a neat finish when you're doing areas with whirls you will probably you'll find that you'll need to clip in multiple directions to get all of the hair clipped to the same length also areas where like here you can see where i'm putting some tension on the skin so where the skin's a little bit loose it's a bit harder to get a nice clean result and a nice um even result you also want to be careful that you don't cut the horse where they've got the wrinkles and the loose skin. So putting some tension on the skin can really help. Now I've sped this part of the video up just so that it doesn't end up super long video. But as you can see here, now I've done the, from the shoulders and the neck, I come and do a line down from the hip. And then starting from the belly, I work my way up. Once again, working against the lie of the hair up to the working up to the shoulder and then curling around here you can see it's curving around to uh, match up with that part of the hip that I've done now you can use larger clippers the reason I'm using these today I do like these wild km10s they're quite powerful and they do coat with most horse coats they also give a really lovely finish so you can have a better chance of getting a nice finish to your clip they're also a fair bit cheaper so for people that are doing um you know, if you're just wanting to have a go yourself and you're not doing too many horses you might not want to spend six seven eight hundred dollars on a set of clippers and so these are a great option once you've clipped the area an area of the horse if you haven't got a really perfect finish and you can see there's a couple of different bits that you may have missed by clipping on about a 45 degree angle to the direction of the hair so a di slightly different angle than you've clipped the first time you can really pick up any of those little extra hairs that you've missed and even out and remove any lines that you might may have um may have been left over when you clipped so same thing here you can just see the sort of lines that you need to take to follow the um the hair growth it's amazing how many different directions the hair grows on a horse and you don't often don't really realize until you start trying to clip them when i do the tail i like to do a little um triangle at the top of the tail i think if you do a really straight across it just looks a bit odd so a nice little triangle however pointy or straight you like to do it is entirely up to you and whatever you prefer periodically make sure that you sweep up all the loose hair as you're going this is just a safety factor for both yourself and the horse because the hair can be quite slippery. Once you clip the legs, see here, here there's like bits, if you clip straight up you can miss the bits between the tendons. If just by picking up the leg like this, see how the tendon is then a bit softer and then it's much easier just to clip straight up and pick up all that hair rather than having to pull the skin around and try and get those longer hairs when the horse is standing. To do behind the in the armpits of the horse, you can if you buy yourself if you've got a safe step that you can put the horse's foot on that's one way to do it or if you've got someone that can hold the leg up and forward that's another option as well P particularly this uh, the armpit area the hair is quite the skin is quite fine and there's quite a bit of it there so there's a fair few wrinkles you want to be really really careful that you don't cut them and catch the skin because the clippers are quite sharp so by stretching the foreleg out you can get a nice even finish and get a really nice clip and also keep it safe for yourself and the horse some horses can be quite ticklish here so just be a little bit careful so this is another option if your horse won't put their foot on the step you can see i pulled it forward the leg forward and i've just tucked it behind myself a little bit again just be careful and keep yourself safe while you're doing this when you're doing any areas on the horse 
in general, well, when you're clipping, you want to really keep yourself safe. It can be quite a dangerous job. A lot of horses don't stand as beautifully as this lovely girl is. So you want to be really careful. And if it's a horse that you don't know, then you need to be even more careful. So as you can see, I'm always keeping my other hand on her as much as I can. This way I can feel if she's going to move before she actually does. So I've got a better understanding of how, what, how she's going to react and what's going to happen. I'm probably not in the safest spot right now. I would normally be a little bit further forward, but I was just trying to stay out of the way of the camera. So again, here you can see that I'm clipping up, but I've got my other hand on her. And then I've actually, here you can see, I've actually got my leg, my thigh against her thigh. So again, I can feel her if she's going to move, but also if she does react and wants to kick, it's going to be more of a push than a kick. If I'm further away, then the end result would be a fair bit more more pain and more um, injury to myself. Hocks are a little bit tricky so you can see here I'm sort of working around in and out and I'm pulling the skin a little bit to help clip in between all those little nooks and crannies that they are so you can get a nice clean finish as well and then as you go up the mane I just like once you clip the get close enough then just take it slowly try and get keep them their head nice and still and I just do real little lines taking only a small amount at each time checking until I've got all the fur and I'm not taking mane now with the head so to start with here I'm going to show you um, if you wanted to do a half head clip show you the line that I do so I've just sped it up again so this video doesn't go on forever but so when you do a half head, you basically want a line that comes from the pole behind the ears, straight down the cheekbones and then down to the uh, corner of the mouth. And then if you can, you want to try and blend it a little bit so you don't have a really sharp line and it's just a bit tidier. So you can see as I'm doing her cheekbones, there's that extra loose skin around there. So if you hold the skin and put some tension there, once again, you can clip it a bit. It's a bit easier to clip. And then also under the jaw, you can lift the head up and hold the head up slightly so that you can access through under the jaw and, and through the gullet there to get all that and have a nice result without leaving any extra hairs. So there you go, you can see how I've just lifted it up there just to stretch it out and it makes it a bit easier. And there is a half head clip. But with this mare today, I'm gonna to do the full clip. So I'm gonna take the rest of it off now. So when you're clipping the head, I've actually, as you can see, just going carefully. So I've sped this up so I'm not actually in real life doing this anywhere near this fast. So you just take it slowly and quietly with the horses. You don't want them if they, knock them they can hurt themselves with the clippers because the, the blades are quite sharp so just be careful over the eyes I like to be really careful to make sure I don't remove and don't clip off those whiskers because I think they're really important so you can see there I've I've actually found it and then I'm, I'm holding it down with my finger on my thumb to make sure that I don't clip it off but I can still trim up all the hairs and get a really nice finish around her eye When you do the ears, you just sort of hold them gently, starting at the top and clip down, removing all the hair as you go. And then when you, you want to be really careful with the forelock. Forelocks seem even harder to grow back than the manes and tails. So you want to make sure you don't take any chunks off if you can. And they can be a little bit ticklish in their, this area. So what I like to do is put my hand and either have my finger or my thumb there. And you'll see in just a moment how I do it. So I sort of find where the fluff is and I have my thumb or now I've got my finger here. So I'm actually going to clip up to my finger. So if they fidget or if they move at all, there's much less chance of me taking forelock or if I do take it'll be a very small amount rather than a massive chunk of forelock which is then a little not much you can do about it until it grows back when I'm doing ears I just like to hold them together gently and clip down to take the hairs that are sticking out I like to leave the the hair on the inside of the ear as much as possible I think that uh, those hairs are really important to stop the any bugs and dirt and dust and every anything else getting in there but you can just take the front and all the extra extra bits off to really tidy them up and by making sure that you get a nice line around the edge and take those 
hairs off the sticker out around the edge as well you get a really nice silhouette for the ear which if you're doing showing or anything you still get a nice look there but the hair's still there to do what it needs to do and keep the health safe so she's all clipped up and finished now as you can see so I like to, after I've clipped, hose them off or sponge them off because you'll find there's an awful lot of hair left on them. If you just rug them up without doing anything else now, you'll find they'll get very itchy. Personally, I like to use the HSE Hot Oil as an oil treatment for the skin and the hair. It's a deep conditioning and moisturising treatment for the skin and the hair and also helps to soothe the, soothe the skin, which we've just irritated by clipping them. So this helps to just give a really deep conditioning treatment and moisturising and soothes them. There's no sort of right or wrong amount of oil to use. I like to do a reasonably strong treatment straight after clipping and then I ease it off after that. So you can see I'm using the Cool Groom towel. It's actually a super absorbent towel, but it doesn't absorb the oil as anywhere near as much. It'll just mostly just absorbs water which is great because it's perfect for the hot oil treatments because you can use it to get the hot oil on and sponge it all on and wipe it all over them but then it will just pull the once you're using it as a drying cloth it'll really only remove the water and leave all that oil in the skin to do its job these are beautiful and soft and i've actually got a uh, special on at the moment with if you've watched this far into the video because this is a bit of a long video so I appreciate you hanging out with me here still there's um, you can get 10% off the HSC hot oil the cool groom cloth and the oil and cloth combo just by using the coupon code best hot oil so you can see how lovely and soft that cloth is and it's brilliant for getting not only the body done but unlike a sweat scraper you can do faces and legs and everything else as well so I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to ask and I'd be more than happy to help.